Good morning, everyone. Usually in church, they say good morning, too. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> okay, it's not church, but this is, this is the Church of Government, I guess, uh, our government center. Welcome to the first, the first uh, annual uh, POW Remembrance Day run by the Forever War Council. And in case you're not familiar with the Forever War Council, um, it's comprised of all the veterans, the federally chartered veterans organizations here in Fall River. And then we have another section, which is the Greater Forever Veterans Council, which is we take in uh, organizations from outside Fall River, which are also here, and we take in groups that support veterans, such as the Veterans Kitchen, and such as the Forever Young Marines, and so forth and so on. So that's the Vet War Veterans Council. Right? I, you'll meet some of them as we go along. Um, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, could the officers please stand from the Forever War Veterans Council? Bob is right here, he's our commander. Give him a hand, please. The first thing we're going to do, which we should always do, we're going to call, have an opening prayer by our chaplain, Ed Bailey. Please stand. Uncover. If I can repeat, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Dear Father God, we come here today to ask your blessings upon this event. We ask that you keep in mind all our brothers and sisters who are prisoners of war, who are MIAs. It's a day of, in a way of celebration, it's also a day that we have to remember our brothers and sisters. Lord, I ask your grace to be upon each and every one in the MIA and the prisoners of war and everyone here today that has come to celebrate with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Kava. Okay, please remain standing. We'll call upon our lead officers. We'll call upon uh, our finance officer, Lenny Tavares, our adjutant, Larry Barola, and our, ch and our chief of staff, Herman Bomback, for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Have a seat, please. The first thing we're supposed to do, of course, is acknowledge some of the public officials that are here today, and if I don't see you, please let me know in the front row. We have State Representative Alan Sylvia, State Representative Carol Fiola, we have City Council Linda Pereira over here, we have of course Mayor Coogan, am I missing any other elected officials, school committee or otherwise? Michelle, is it, where's Michelle? Can't, Michelle, she's hiding behind the pole, Michelle over here please, Michelle, please give a round of applause, okay, okay, all right. Are there any other school committee or city council here? Okay, well, thank you, thank you. Everybody that did attend, we appreciate it. Whenever a public official takes the time to, to come to one of our events, we appreciate it, and we would like to encourage them to attend the parades and other events that we run during the year. Okay, um, the first thing we'd like to do is introduce the outgoing veteran service officer, which I'm sure everybody in the city, in the city, in this town, the city is right, knows, and uh, that's uh, Raymond Haig. Raymond, can you please step up? Uh, thank you, Bill, and uh, thank you to the War Veterans Council for inviting me here today uh, to say a few words, which will be brief, because everyone knows I've had plenty to say over the last 10 years, so <laughs> we'll give you a break. And I, I'd just like to recognize uh, one of my predecessors, uh, Paul Solomon's here today. Uh, thanks for coming down, Paul. He, he spent quite a few years laying the groundwork um, that I inherited, and um, we've always had uh, successful ceremonies here in the city of Fall River. We have accomplished an awful lot, and I know there'll be a lot accomplished going forward. Um, we have uh, a friend in veterans in Mayor Coogan, who you'll be hearing from in a few minutes. So, like I said, I don't have a whole lot to say. It's not goodbye, but um, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. 
it was very few words. Uh, before Mayor Coogan uh, uh, comes up to speak, and he's our main speaker here, I'd like to uh, ask, anybody that's in the Navy, please raise your hand. That was in the Navy. We thank you. Army, raise your hand. Marine Corps, raise your hand. Air Force, raise your hand. Coast Guard, raise your hand. Oh, we do have one over there. <laughs> Mac <Mac -Mac 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 -Mac> <laughs> I knew we'd get one of them over here. Thank you very much. Thank you for now. And now before we begin again, I'd also like to do something else. Is how many, anybody here from World War II? Please stand up. World War II. Don't let his age fool you. I've been at a few functions where he's at, and he's, 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 he acts more like a, a 20 year old than a 90 something year old. What, how old are you, Manny? 97? 97. You've seen a lot of life. Thank you very much. Now, anybody from the, the Korean War here? Anybody still during the Korean War? Please raise your hand. Stand up. Earl Gordet over the side over there. Please get up. Uh -huh. Okay, it's just a bit. Now, anybody, I don't want to say it's my favorite war, but it's the one I'm most familiar with, Vietnam. Any Vietnam veterans here served during the Vietnam era or in Vietnam? Raise your hand. Stand up, please, Dick. I see my buddy Gino back there. Bob Guyton. In fact, he was in the Army, and we served in the same place in Vietnam together. But now, how about the latest wars, the Mideast Wars? And, and we not just, I just want the veterans to stand up, but I want the families, and especially we have Gold Star families in Florida from the Mideast Wars, to please stand up. Please stand, Mrs. Barrett. Give him a round of applause. We thank you all for your service and for your sacrifice. And now, please, Mayor Coogan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Of course, it's a great privilege. It's a great privilege to be here today to acknowledge uh, POW MIA Recognition Day, but I want to thank the organizers of this, of this ceremony, and I want to obviously acknowledge all the elected officials that come out to events like this. Um, I am very honored to serve as Mayor of Fall River, where our pride for veterans and armed forces run extremely deep. As Mayor, supporting our veteran community is one of my top priorities. The residents of this city who fought for our freedom deserve nothing less. However, today we're recognizing a group who never came home. Uh, over 81,000 service members still to this day remain missing. They leave behind family, friends who grapple every day with pain, uncertainty, hope, and grief. These brave men, men and women have never left our hearts or our prayers. It is the hope that by remembering them today, we can bring comfort to the families, respect the ultimate sacrifice they gave, and keep hope alive that someday, some of them may come back. I want to thank God, and I want to God, and I want to thank America every single day. And to do that, we're going to uh, honor them with a proclamation from the city of Fall River. Um, honoring uh, POW MIA Day. Today, Friday, September 17th, has been declared National POW MIA Recognition Day. Today, we pay tribute to our service members who have not returned from the battlefield. We stand beside their families, and we honor those that were held captive as prisoners of war. We will never forget the sacrifices, nor will we abandon our responsibility to do everything in our power to bring them home. And whereas the POW MIA flag is a symbol of concern about United States military personnel taken as POWs or still listed as MIAs, our national POW MIA Recognition Day, the flag is flown on the grounds of major military installations, veteran memorials, government agencies, and federal national cemeteries. Whereas, here in the city of Fall River, our POW MIA flag is permanently and proudly displayed in the lobby where we're standing today of Government Center. 
It is a solemn reminder to our obligations to always remember the sacrifices that these individuals made to defend our nation. National POW MIA Recognition Day ceremonies share one common purpose of honoring those who held captive and returned, as well as those who still remain missing. Today and every day, we express our profound appreciation to these service members, our veterans, our military families, and all those who place themselves in harm's way to sustain the virtues that are a hallmark of our great country. And therefore, it is resolved that I, Paul Coogan, Mayor of the City of Fall River, do proclaim September 17th as Fall River POW MIA Recognition Day. And I urge all of our citizens to observe this day, which honors and remembers those service members who were held captive and returned, as well as those who still, to this day, remain missing. Witnessed today by my hand, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. You know, I'm looking around the room as the mayor's speaking. A lot of you people I recognize, some I don't. And uh, you notice over here on the left, by the way, we have the Durfee ROTC program. Young men and women that are going to become uh, servicemen and women in serving our country. Give me a round of applause. Thank you for coming down. And of course, uh, wherever we go in the city, whatever event is happening, we've got the award-winning for a police department honor guard. So. Well, as we get older, things change, and it's time for a change, and hopefully a change for the better, and we must move forward. And I'd like to introduce you to the new veteran service officer. It's not the dog, okay? <laughs> but there's the, there's the woman accompanying the dog, uh, Michaela Brito. Mr. Mayor, our fellow elected officials, honored guest, Ray Haig, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. As, I, as was stated, I'm Kyla Brito and I'm the new Director of Veteran Services. It's my honor and privilege to be able to serve the City of Fall River's veteran community to include their spouses, approved dependents, and our Gold Star family members. As I begin my journey as here in Fall River, and learn more about our Gold Star families who reside here and the stories of their loved ones who have paid the ultimate sacrifice as a prisoner of war, missing in action, or killed in action. It will allow me to get to have more knowledge of the city and its military history. I, as a VSO, have been humbled to be able to be plain side as several of our Commonwealth of Massachusetts missing in action members have been returned to the Commonwealth and to American soil. To be able to witness the closure of these families have been provided has been quite the experience. Additionally, to be able to say that I have been able to have firsthand experience to speak and work with former POWs and hear their experience. The fact that I already have a strong working relationship with organizations such as Rolling Thunder, Patriot Guard Riders, and other organizations, it'll assist paying tribute when necessary. In closing, I want to say thank you for the great working relationship with the Greater Fall River Veterans Council in the future and on many different events within the city, which will be paramount to my office. I want to thank them for their collaboration on this event. And in closing, I want you each to remember today's event and that we will always remember our POWs and MIAs and their families. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker uh, needs no introduction, but I have to introduce him anyway. It's my job. Um, <laughs> Commander Robert Viner. I'll get it to you. I'm going to go to the podium, okay? Okay, sure. No problem. Okay, Oops. I got my uh, cheek meal. You know. okay. 
We got you back. You got the six. Let's go. Kane, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Have your attention, please. I, I certainly uh, want to thank everybody for their patience. Um, <coughs> Okay, I want to also welcome you to our, our, our event today, uh, a very important one. And uh, as you most uh, know, my name is, uh, is Robert Biner. I'm the commander of the War Veterans Council, and the Greater Fall River Veterans Council. My remarks are gonna be short, simple from my heart. Most importantly, I thank each and every one of you for joining us here today. At this BOWMIA Remembrance Ceremony, I truly thank you for honoring and remembering our brothers and sisters in arms who were prisoners of war or missing in action. Our Brotherhood of Veterans extends across the military branches of service of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Marines, and across all conflicts of war and times of service. I can, ass I can assure you that as veterans, we are connected as one because each of us carry in our hearts a special place for our comrades who never came home. As veterans, we realized we could have ended up as a prisoner of war, or missing in action, or even killed in combat, and we thank God that we did return home to our families. We also know that some of the troops listening and missing in action were alive and confirmed as prisoner of war but they never returned home or were accounted for to the Gold Star families included in this, who loved the, loved the ones who were killed in action. Understand that more of any of us, the heartache felt by the families or loved ones who never came home. As commander of the War Veteran Council, I promise their families and the Gold Star families that we will never forget, their sons and daughters, their fathers, their mothers, and their siblings. We will always remember them in our thoughts and our prayers and remembrance and remembers such and at remembrance of such as this. Thank you and God bless America. <laughs> Covering your butt, aren't you? <laughs> I'm, old, I'm old school. I got a long time. I only remember the brothers. <laughs> hey, Bob, you're a nice guy, but you took my program book. Can I, can I have it back? <laughs> can I have your program book or someone? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I apologize. Okay. All right. He does it to me all the time. Doesn't matter. Now, um, the next person we would like to have say a few words. And again, I'm looking, I feel so good seeing so many people here and from all the different branches and from all the different veterans organizations. And we have a lot of veterans organizations here. We have the VFW, the American Legion, the Italian American veterans, uh, uh, Portuguese American veterans. Polish. The Polish, oh, you cannot forget the Polish. They won't let you forget it either, let me tell you. <laughs> 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 right, the, the Polish veterans, uh, the VFW. Am I missing any, Mr. Grant from the VFW? Anybody else? 
Oh, oh can, for not, cannot forget the tin can sailors. Yeah, they, 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 by the way, they have a museum right across the river in Somerset. You ought to go visit that sometime, a big museum the tin can sailors has. American Legion, I did say the American Legion. American Legion. Who is it? Disabled American. Disabled American Veterans. Cannot forget Disabled American Veterans. Bob is not here. Bob is, uh, Paul, Paul rather, Paul is the commander of the Disabled American Veterans, but he, uh, he, had, he had an appointment for what we call CNP, and that means if he doesn't go up there today, they're going to probably cut off his benefits, so he had to go up there today. Did he designate anybody here to say a few words for him today? Okay. Matt? We'll have Matt Kaminsky uh, in a couple of minutes come and say a few words for him, so he will be well represented. But right now... Marine, oh my God, where's the Marine Corps? Where's Mr. Donnelly? He's always here. He's here. He's here, he's here. Mr. Donnelly's here? I thought I saw his son here somewhere. Right there he is in the back. He's not here? He never misses anything for veterans. But anyways, uh, the former War Council, we have a, there's a lot of us. There's, there's more than, right now we're probably up to 18 organizations, and we need some time to, to maneuver and navigate the government, whether it's state or city, or other things that we need to have done, and so that we can't explain ourselves well, or. Well, we, we end up speaking like we're Marine Corps sergeants and we shouldn't, I guess, in dealing with government. So we have someone we've we elected and designated to be that person as the Veterans Council Consulate. And she's helped us for many years, and that's Linda Pereira, City Consular. Right. Still morning. Good morning, all. First and foremost, I want to thank the War Veterans Council for uh, designating me this honorable position. You know, my dad was a World War II veteran, and after my mom died, I started to go with him to his reunions. And that's when I felt a lot about what veterans did. I learned a lot. And I live in a city that is so 100 percent proud of their veterans. I can't tell you how overwhelming that is. We have had great leadership in the Veterans Service Office with Paul, with Ray, and now with Mrs. Brito, Michaela. Uh, with, and, and I think that that's great. We need to work together. But I'm going to tell you that Rolling Thunder goes above and beyond in different veteran events. I really have to uh, give a shout out to Michelle Hamilton, who's the president of that organization. And I went to an op uh, a Memorial Day event. We did the Veterans Day, the Memorial Day <coughs> events, the drive-bys, and I was lucky to be part of it to try to help put it together. But there was a young man there, and he gave a talk at the Liberal Club. And that cage you see, that's where they would put a prisoner of war. Can you imagine being shoved in that box for days, weeks? And you're shoved in that box because you're fighting for every single one of us to make sure that we don't get put in boxes like that. If you know that somebody is a prisoner of war, we pray. Don't we pray when we're in trouble? But somebody that's missing in action, you don't even know where they are, so your mind wanders. Or if you get a call or a knock at the door that your loved one's been killed in action. But this young man really hit a spark with me. He was notified that his dad was missing in action. He was eight or 10 years old at the time. His mother lived a dream that someday her husband would show up at the door. She never dated. She never remarried. She raised her child. That boy thought at every life event and special ceremony that dad would all of a sudden appear, whether it was at the playoff game at a basketball game or a, 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 a baseball game or at his high school graduation or at his confirmation. He always had these dreams that dad's going to show up until the age of 26 when the phone rang and he answered it and it was the government letting him know 
that his father's body had been found. How do you live with that? How do we not have the utmost respect for veterans and for all that veterans have done? I look at a country where I find young people, they lack respect. They lack the dignity of respecting the elders. Somebody like Mr. Cavallo, who served in World War II, and every other single war, battle, or conflict. I just can't imagine being a daughter of a World War II veteran who my dad became very friendly when he got on the ship. He was a Navy guy. I think he told me he joined the Navy because they had the coolest suits. I don't know. My father was always a shop dresser. But he met a gentleman, Cornelius Murphy, from the south end of Fall River. We lived in the Flint. And that brotherhood that Mr. Viner just talked about, the brotherhood, and I say sisterhood, um, that happens when you're in the military. But can you imagine? Think about it. A parent being in that box, taken out whenever they felt like taking you out, or being missing when no one knows where you are. And I'll leave you with this. Again, I am so darn proud of my city because all of our veteran officers work diligently for our veterans and for our veteran community. But if you see somebody proudly wearing a hat of a veteran, whether it's any branch of the service, can you just take a minute and say thank you for your service? Because we should be doing a lot more than just thank you for your service. I know I went on too long, but it, it really touches my heart because I could not imagine what any family goes through knowing that somebody is a prisoner of war or missing in action. So with that said, they're going to throw me out. And I would like to add that um, my colleague Trot Lee has to be working today, but he asked that I send his regards. He wished that he could be here, um, but he can't. And as always, God bless the United States of America. And don't you dare forget to thank a veteran. Thank you so much. It was, uh, thank you very much, Linda. That was really good and really moving. Um, um, the next person I'm going to call up, I'm, I'm, like, I know she's, she said it, and again, think about that. Um, and my, my daughter's back there, my daughter Joanne. I wonder what the, how she would have had her life growing up without uh, her parent coming home, just like that young man did. But, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Michelle Hamilton from the uh, Rolling Thunder. The chair here was donated by Rolling Thunder, and she'll tell you about their mission. We wouldn't even have this chair here if it wasn't for them. So please, Michelle Hamilton. Good morning, and thank you for inviting Rolling Thunder today to speak on behalf of the POW MIA mission. My name's Michelle Hamilton, and I'm the president of Rolling Thunder, Massachusetts, Chapter 2. The mission of Rolling Thunder is twofold. We advocate for the return of our missing brothers and sisters. Second, we help America's veterans from all wars. If you look to your right, my right, you'll see a POW chair. That chair was dedicated here in Fall River in 2013. Rolling Thunder was uh, a sponsor of that chair along with Cardi's. Um, at that time, there were 92,000 brothers and sisters missing in action. Currently today, the number is 81,600. So since 2013, remains have been repatriated. Let us also note that the United States is the only country that seeks a full accounting of our missing in action service members. It's kind of a concept to wrap your head around. Um, we are the only nation that seeks that full accounting. As an organization, Rolling Thunder has 90 chapters, and we've been advocating for the return of missing in action and prisoners of war for over 30 years. 
We've been instrumental in changing public laws and policies. Through advocacy, I've been privileged to meet many families of the missing, and I stand today as a representative of several of those families. Today, I want to speak on behalf of Shirley, Bob, Katie, and Rich, all families of missing. Shirley, someone that I actually met through my employment. Um, I saw her when we dedicated a POW chair in downtown Middleborough, only to find out that she was the sister of William Smith missing in action from the <coughs> Vietnam War. I didn't know that about her. This year, she was able to lay a rose in Fall River at the Fall River Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall below her brother's name. Um, that was a tough thing to see. Her brother Bob, also a Vietnam veteran who returned from Vietnam but not unscathed for he has survivor's remorse because his brother never came home. In speaking with him about his military service, he always minimizes who he was and what he did because he worries about his brother. Katie's another person that I've had the privilege of meeting. I knew her for over 10 years before I found out that her uncle was missing from the Korean conflict. When remains were returned to the country, I think it was 65 of them uh, two years ago, uh, she and I spoke about the fact that could her uncle's remains be in that batch that came back to the United States. Her mother couldn't even fathom to think about that. T Tuesday, Rolling Thunder had the honor of repatriating the remains, and I have to make sure I get the name correct because it's been a lot over the past few days. Um, uh, hold on. I'm going to say it right. Thomas Redgrave, he was from the Korean War, 70 years missing in action, brought home to Lawrence on Tuesday, and he's being buried at Bourne National Cemetery today. Um, or actually Rich, who Linda already spoke about, whose father was missing in action from Vietnam. He was returned home. However, so many of his missions were uh, secret that Richard wasn't able to find out very much about his dad or his dad's service. And now in his 40s, he still searches for information about his dad. Um, so all these families have one thing in common, a deep sense of loss and unresolved family trauma. We in Rolling Thunder stand before you to represent those families, and if not us, then who? So we make sure that they will never be forgotten. Thank you. I know uh, we do have a couple of speakers. Have probably have one more, but it, each one of you, as you can hear, is speaking for a reason and speaking from their heart, and it's very significant for today. I'd like to call up Matt Gaminski. Matt is representing Paul Pacheco, the uh, commander of the DAV. By the way, the Fall River chapter, just the Fall River chapter of Disabled American Veterans has over 500 members. Matt, please. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Matt Gossaminski. I'm the adjutant of the Disabled American Veterans, William S. Green, Chapter 9. Uh, our commander, Paul Pacheco, has a medical appointment at the VA hospital, and he, he cannot miss. So he asked me, or should I say he ordered me, <laughs> RHIP, you've heard that, rank has its privileges to represent him and Chapter 9 of the DAV today. The DAV in Fall River has over 500 disabled American veterans as members. And speaking on behalf of each of them, I want to extend our appreciation to Mayor Paul Coogan, the elected officials, uh, and everyone present. 
for making the effort and taking the time to attend the POW MIA Remembrance Ceremony. The members of the DAV has incurred a multitude of disabilities as a result of their military service. But we veterans, though disabled, we have had an opportunity to return to our city and our families and enjoy life. Be assured that each member of our organization is forever mindful of the ultimate sacrifice made by our comrades who were killed in action and for our comrades who are still listed as prisoners of war or missing in action, who never returned home. Members of the DAV have both physical and psychological disabilities and from time to time we complain about our disabilities, how our disabilities affect us, but in our hearts and minds we know that it could have been a lot worse for us. That is why it is important to us that we never forget and always remember and to keep hope alive for our comrades in arms who did not return home to America and for the, their families who continue to pray and hold hope they will return. It is important for all of us to take this one hour out of this day of this year to remember our POWs and MIAs. The least we can do as veterans, as Americans, is to stop and remember our sons and daughters, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, cousins, friends, and next to door neighbors who will never had the who will never have the opportunity to enjoy the life as we have all been able today. And before you go to sleep tonight, I ask that you reach out to God and ask him to care well for the souls of our veterans who never returned home. Uh, on behalf of our commander Paul Pacheco and the William S. Green Chapter 9 of Disabled American Veterans, again, thank you for joining us at this POW MIA resemble. Remembrance. Thank you. Okay. Um, trying to find my spot here. I apologize. Okay. I'm not the. Uh, I guess the. The, the fastest. Uh, fastest MC here, okay? Um, we're gonna go into, we're gonna, um, I'd like us before we leave to sing God Bless America, and we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna have a closing ceremony where we're gonna go outside and release white doves. We were gonna pass out strands of barbed wire, but we passed out so many that I ended up, uh, that, I, that I ended up, I went to the bag and the bag was bare. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but as you know, we passed the barbed wire out here all the time, okay? But before we do, uh, go another step, uh, State Representative Carol Fiola and Alan Sylvia would like to address you. Please step up. Wow. Um, this is the largest gathering uh, I've been to, I believe every single one of them, myself and Rep Sylvia, and uh, I think it just shows what this community is capable of and what it does again and again. Uh, we're coming on the heels of our Vietnam Wall dedication. We're coming on the heels of dedicating to our very own hero, Thomas Hudna, and that story. I hope every one of the ROTC members at Durfee here to take a few minutes to hear his story. It's, it's utterly amazing, and he was simply a far of a kid that became a hero, uh, just like all of our veterans in many ways. Um, I'm honored to present this proclamation. Normally we bring a quick citation. Uh, a proclamation is a little bit more involved to get on the state level. Uh, Bill, thank you, and your War Council. Commander Viner, thank you. Uh, to the Mayor, to the Reverend, to all of the delegation, and especially to every single Vietnam veteran and Gold Star family in presence today. Um, it, it's, it's the stories today reminds us that there's a story behind every single one of you 
and uh, we need to hear those stories. And I think uh, Councillor Pereira reminded us as well that if you want to share those stories, we're here to listen, and uh, we, we need to continue to do that, so thank you. Um, I also wanted to say on behalf of my colleagues, who are both veterans, both Marine veterans, Rep. Schmidt, who could not be here today and extends his regrets, and my good colleague, Alan Sylvia, two Marines who I am always honored to serve with, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Rep. Sylvia, for your dual role in public service. Um, today, Vietnam um, prisoners of war, I mean prisoners of war and missing in action day, September 17th, 2021, Massachusetts House of Representatives resolution. Whereas Friday the 17th of September 2021 will be recognized as POW MIA Day in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and whereas today serves to honor and remember those who were prisoners of war, POW, and those who are missing in action, as well as their families, we will never forget their sacrifice. And whereas the POW MIA flag serves as a symbol of recognition for those declared a prisoner of war or declared missing in action, the flag symbolizes the commitment and concern of our nation to bring these individuals home. And whereas we renew our commitment to veteran services for service members, veterans and their families, and offer our appreciation to those who continue to serve, we remember the sacrifice made by so many for our nation, as well as all those who have not yet returned home. Therefore, be it resolved that the Massachusetts House of Representatives shows their gratitude to those who were prisoners of war and those who are missing in action, as well as stands with their families who remain committed to bring their loved ones home, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be forwarded to, by the clerk of the House of Representatives to the Fall River War Veterans Council, signed today uh, by our Speaker of the House, Ronald Mariano, by a clerk of our court, Stephen James, and offered by State Representatives Carol Fiola, Alan Sylvia, and Paul Schmidt. It's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Commander <laughs> Vina, I want to present this to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. I found out what was wrong with the program where it threw me off a little bit. We're ready to close out after one more speaker, but I found out what happened. I happened to put the program together and left my name off. <laughs> I kept looking, what's missing? I kept looking for it and I said, one thing is missing. And I forgot, so I know you've all been very attentive and I'm the last one. Hopefully you haven't lost your, your patience at this point, okay? So, from the bottom of uh, our hearts, uh, the Fort War Veterans Council commends and thanks every one of you who joined us today. I've been watching, you've all been looking, watching, listening, and I'm, I know you've been taking it to heart because I've seen, I've seen how you reacted when people were talking. Your attendance fills our hearts and lifts our spirits, indicates that our comrades in arms still listed as missing in action or prisoners of war can still count on you to never forget and always remember them. From 1967 to 1970, I served in the Marine Corps. I was, as they say, boots on the ground in Vietnam. And believe it or not, there are quite a few Vietnam veterans with, still with us today. I see my good buddy Teddy Banks back there. I see Paul Guyon, I can name a whole bunch of them that are here today that we served with and that some, Teddy actually served in multiple wars. Veterans and their families know how important it is to remember our POWs and MIAs. And we do that today with honor and pride. Veterans know full well that when we serve, there is a possibility that we could end up as KIA, MIA, or POW, as our commander said. And all we ask in return is for our comrades in arms to be remembered. Being killed in action or prison of war is a risk we take when we join the service and go to war. But it is a deep down, gut-wrenching reality for veterans' families when they learn that their loved one has been killed in action or has gone missing in action or report as a prisoner of war. As comrades in arms, we all share the same reality. Since I returned from Vietnam, the realization that others did not may never come home, maybe out of survival or guilt, I really thought that most of them would come home after the war ended. I really thought that. I thought the war's gonna end, a lot of these guys are gonna come home now. I'm shocked that right now we have about a little over 1,600 still from Vietnam unaccounted for. As they told you, 81,000 since World War II alone, unaccounted for. That's a lot of veterans. 
That's a lot of bodies, a lot of families, a lot of people. Okay? We must continue sharing the memories and spirit. We must continue to pray for their souls and get together at remembrances such as this to let the world and remind fellow Americans to never forget our POWs and MIAs. We're going to close our ceremony today. And uh, I, I forgot to mention another person before we close the ceremony. Uh, Mr. Joe Marshall, he's the chairman of the Vietnam Vets Memorial Wall Committee, a Vietnam vet as well. Please stand up. I know, I know you, where are you, Joe? Joe? By the way, Joe looks the way he does because he was an intelligence officer. We didn't say he was intelligent, but he was an intelligence officer in Vietnam, you know? He's the one that we, he said, go out there in the field, bring back some information. We bring him back the information, he report it. That's okay, okay. All right, so, all right. Anyway, so um, I'd like to ask you all to join me, and I hope you will, in singing God Bless America. Let's let this hall hear it. Please stand up. Everybody ready? Clear your throat. Don't take a drink of water because you don't have any. Sure. Yes. And right after that, you can lay the reef for us. Okay. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam. God bless America, our home, sweet home. God bless America, our home, sweet home. Rock! Okay. Good job, everybody. Reverend Stinson, please go. Please remain standing. Ten years ago on this day, 2011, September 17th, I, I walk into the, the, what is the dining facility in Al-Assad, Iraq. And I walked in, and to the right, I saw a white tablecloth with an empty chair. I remember that day, and I remember that moment, and I remember that because of the fact, and many other warriors do, because of the fact that it, what I knew in that moment as one who served in that place, in harm's way, that no matter what would happen to us, someone would come for us. And someone would keep coming for us. And your presence here today is evidence of that fact, that, no, that you continue to come for those who have been lost. And so I invite you in this spirit to pray with me. Lord of all goodness, the maker of peace and life itself, it is you who brings all souls home. Send your blessing to those warriors and their families who have borne the burden of captivity and whose story is not yet complete in this world, nor in the service of their nation. On this high day, let your love soothe the wounds of separation and instill in us a holy fire to bring every soul home, to honor every sacrifice, to tend every wound, to nurture every new generation, to hold dear the gift that, they ha that every warrior has presented, and to help everyone's journey find rest. As we depart from this place, grant us the strength and honor to carry with us the sacred love of country and service that is embodied in these missing in action and prisoners of war that all have done and endured has not been in vain. We pray this in the name of it all that is holy. Amen. 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 Cover. Cover. We're now going to have the white dove ceremony. Paula, could you step outside? Anyone, especially uh, Mr. Barris, if you'd like. There she is, Grandma. Could you follow Paula, take Grandma with you out there? Any Gold Star family members? Any veterans who'd like to help us release the doves, please step outside. Anybody else who'd like to participate in the ceremony, at least watch the ceremony, we'd like you to come outside. Are you ready, everybody? Yeah. One at a time, when I point to you, release your dove, one at a time. What's that? <laughs> Grandma, so ready? Grandma, Next. 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 Next.
Luke! 